it's getting to that time of year where we're starting to see new spy photos of new products out there by bikes. In today's video, we're talking about the brand new 2023 Trek Domani. Unreleased yet from Trek specifically, but there's an article today by Velo News that they put out there that they've seen some pros riding it on what looks to be the new 2023 Trek Domani. So in today's video, we're going to show you the differences from this model year from last model year and also talk about is there even a spot in today's day and age for an endurance road bike. So we're going to talk about that. I'm going to have my editor roll my intro that he made. We've been working on this for a year. Hopefully you guys enjoy the intro and roll the intro. And then that's where you're going to roll the intro at right there. Maybe before you do that, do like a ping ping and then like an explosion top left, top right. And um, just make it look like we've been looking out for a really long time. I know you haven't really been working on it for a while, but it's going to look so good. And then we're going to end right there. How was that, guys? Very good? Awesome. Cool. All right. So in today's video, like I mentioned before, they've changed a good amount of things on this Trek Damani. It seems to appear to make it lighter. And again, like I said, guys, this is from Velo News. They released an article where they got a bunch of great looking spy photos. Um, but the bike looks slimmer, faster, and less proprietary, if that makes sense. So as we can see, the first thing that picks out to me is that there is no more of the old school style seat posts that used to be on the old Trek Damani, where they had a seat mask stick up into the air and then you fitted a seat post to it. Now it looks like there's just a regular 27.2 carbon fiber seat post on there. Um, that looks, it looks pretty circular. I don't know if it's flat in the back, but it looks just like a circular seat post, which again, they're going away from the proprietary stuff, which is a benefit to the consumer because that means that they don't have to rely on specific dealers to get replacement parts. If there was ever a snap, or if they have this bike for, let's say 10 years, that they don't make the part anymore. So good thing there. looks like they're going away from the, um, just to a regular 27.2. And you guys know, I've always talked about the Amandas, the Damanis, the checkpoints. I never have been a fan of those seat posts myself. It's just my preference. Some people love them, but I like a normal seat post. So I think this looks great. They still kept the ISO speed decoupler for the rear, which gives a little bit of pivot or a little bit of, of comfort in the back to allow the seat mass to move or seat post to move. So it's still an endurance bike. So they still want to have that, which is great. But they did change how you adjust it. And it looks like they slimmed it down to make it a little bit lighter. Um, as we can see right here on the down tube, they kept the integrated seat, um, the integrated uh, storage for uh, where you can open up this down tube. You can put a tube, a CO2. You can get away with a little toolkit in there like they used to do before back in the day, um, which you're seeing more and more endurance bikes do, which is not uncommon. So scrolling down, we can see shots of the pros here. They're running with a one by here with a 1033 cassette and they have a little K-Edge chain guard mount there but you can see it looks more like a sleeker bike it looks like a faster bike and that's the thing is that these domani's when they're released yes they're endurance bike that's what they're meant to be they're meant to be comfortable but a lot of people every time i've done a video every time i've seen domani's um even other endurance bikes in other categories they're always get this bad rep for being a pig they've kind of felt a little bit heavy so it looks like they're trying to make this bike comfortable but also fast and light and super quick and the best so, um, and also they have the new SRAM blips on here too. You can see the little SRAM sprinter blips on here. Uh, but yes, so this is old school 2022, 2021 Trek Domani. This is new school Trek Domani with the, without the integrated seat mass with a little bit more of a lower thing. But now brings us to the second one. Yes, they removed the seat mass here and they changed the ISO decoupler, which we'll talk about in a second on the rear, but also on the front. Looks like they got rid of the whole ISO speed decoupler in the front as well. See right here, this little line, if you guys follow me with my finger, if you follow me with the finger, follow me with the finger, follow me with the finger. This goes down here. This was a separate piece on the head tube, which is again, a proprietary piece for the front of the cockpit. What it's meant to do when riding, I have my hands on the handlebars. It is meant to disperse or to make the, the front of the bike more compliant. It is meant to give you a little bit more comfort. It's meant to, to be able to pivot back and forth a little bit. Again, this is proprietary. This is more weight and it's more things that can go wrong after a while for moving parts on the bike. So the cables are ran mounted behind the stem down and tear to not affect with the ISO speed to couple in the front. Now we go to today's 2023 that we have the spy photos of. It's ran very similar to the Trek Amanda or the Trek Chepcoin. It doesn't look like there's any more ISO speed to couple in here. Um, it is a pretty big head tube still right here. Maybe there's something behind here. Who knows? We'll have to see once Trek releases it, but the cables are ran underneath to make it an integrated cockpit. Um, tire size. I'm, is pretty much it looks like it's gonna be similar to what it is uh, what it was before i think it was a 700 by 30 39 i believe it was 
or I think it's 33. Forgive me if I'm if I'm wrong, but I, I don't see them going wider than that because of the fact that there would be no reason to have a gravel bike. Here, right here, we can see they got rid of the whole adjustment of what the old school ISO speed decoupler used to be. So right here, we can see older style ISO speed decoupler for the Trek Damani. This is the adjustment you used to have, but it was a very robust system. Uh, yes, it gave you a lot of adjustability, but kind of seemed like you didn't need it. Here, it looks like it's much slimmer. They took away that adjustment on the bottom, and maybe they just have two or three drop-in settings to make it a little bit lighter and a little bit more convenient for the consumer. But again, it looks like they're going away from proprietary and more to standard stuff, like the seat post being 27.2, standard. Like the old school press fit bottom brackets that used to be back in the day where they were BB90, Specialized had their OSBB. Now they're going to a T47 bottom bracket or they've, they've had a T47, but it seems like they're going back to threaded, back to standard stuff that's worked. Less headaches for manufacturers, better results for consumers, um, and they're going with what the consumers want. Again, we get a little bit more of a, of a close-up shot here. Underside of the Damani. The, the tubes on it, to be honest with you, look beefier than the original Damani right now. It looks fatter. So unless there's going to be something that's going to come out SLR. And there also, I think there's rumors of an RS, RSL, which could be even lighter. This could be maybe an RSL Damani in the future as well. But we'll see. Maybe that's why that yellow sticker's there. Here is the front ISO speed decoupler right here. You can see on the old Trek. But again, this is a newer Trek version of it. So they have this little yellow sticker, these yellow spy uh, things that cover up the spy, but we can get a better picture. This looks like a circular C post and everything like that. Now, old school Damani. Again, seat mass sticking up, ISO speed decoupler, ISO speed decoupler, and they were a massive, massive pig of a bike. Whereas this looks a little bit more racy and it looks a little bit faster and quicker. So now this brings me to my statement of the day. Statement of the day. One of the most popular selling endurance road bikes that we've ever sold in my store was a Specialized Roubaix SL4 and SL3. The bike that had nothing gimmicky about it, it literally just had zerts, which were pretty much polyurethane rubber inserts that went to the fork and the rear stage of the bike. Nothing movement, nothing crazy like that. It was just a bike that had a taller head tube and a little bit more relaxed geometry with a wider wheelbase. We sold so many of those bikes, but there was a clear difference between a tarmac and a Roubaix of a ride. People enjoyed it. People were upright. People felt more comfortable. Even though they have the massive tires, this is back when 23s and 700 by 23 millimeter tires and 700 by 25 millimeter tires was still a thing and people were still comfortable riding these bikes. Nowadays, jump to the future, Tarmax, Amandas, Cervelos, um, Penarellos, whatever they are. They have these massive carbon bikes. They have these Huge, huge tires nowadays, 700 by 28 C, 700 by 30 C. Some of these bikes able to take up to a 700 by 33 C tire with wide, wide internal width rims to spread that tire out even more. You get on these bikes nowadays, you feel very, very comfortable. So I rarely get people coming in and ask me for a Roubaix. Uh, well, just in my area of road, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. We're very s smooth and nice paved roads over here. But we rarely get that kind of option out there. Uh, because of the fact that in today's day and age, everyone's realizing that Comfort, I guess, is relates to speed. So there's very little times that we see um, a need for Roubaix in terms. I, I put people on tarmacs all the time. They're like, "Oh, this this feels comfortable." I mean, yes, you can't adjust the height of the of the head tube. That, that's that's one thing you have to take into consideration. But if you size into the right bike, the width of these wheels, the width of these tires, the bike just rides very smooth. So, and then and then you have the option of that you're seeing now. So many companies make a gravel bike that can be turned into a road bike. Example, checkpoint that can pretty much, the Trek checkpoint can be pretty much be turned into a road bike. The specialized Crux that just came out, a lot of people are buying Cruxes for me that are using it as a dual purpose bike. Gravel, road, gravel, road. They'll even buy the gravel bike, the Crux, and just buy an extra pair of wheels for road biking and let it run. Um, I'm seeing that so much and more that these bikes have so much more capabilities. I've even seen someone go this far as to make a Tarmac SL7 into a gravel bike. They put 700 by 33C tires on there and rode on the levee and just rode in the dirt. And the bike took the 33C tires. And yes, there's a little bit of rubbing there, but he just chose to do it. But you can run a 30 tire on there with no problem. So I don't know how well these options are doing in terms of an endurance bike. I know they still sell. I know there's still a, a customer out there for it. But man, it's it, like the Damani, the Roubaix, the Roubaix still has a future shock, which is still a really superior system. I like the superior system a lot. Um, 
the Caledonia. Like you're seeing a lot more companies come out like like specialized with the Athos for that matter. It's a it's a similar platform to the Tarmac SL7, but more comfy of a bike. And I mean, I don't see where you put you stack that bike up next to the Roubaix, and then you put the Diverge in the mix. So you have Diverge, Roubaix, Athos, Tarmac. Three of those bikes are very, or two of those bikes are very similar in terms of Diverge and Roubaix, just the tire size. I don't know where this, where these bikes are falling. There's so many options out there for consumers that sometimes it almost gets overwhelming for a consumer. And sometimes they just get lost and maybe they don't make the bike purchase at all. So we'll see what happens in the endurance lineup. I mean, obviously these bikes still sell. People still buy them. But uh, I've just seen the, tr the fad go more and more towards wide tires, wide rims, big tire clearances. And, um, and, and the race bikes have that option too. So, but very cool, exciting news. I know people use the Domani a lot as well for a gravel bike. I've seen people run that. I've done a video on people doing that video or that bike. So it's very cool. But anyways, that's going to conclude my rant. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys again so much for watching this video. Um, appreciate it. And I have some more content come out later on the road. Thank you. Bye.